staff, but he's been budget director and is a veteran of the Clinton administration. Lou is also the fourth white man to be chosen to fill the president's second term cabinet. And the White House is feeling the heat on this. The LA Times writes, Obama cabinet may not meet its own diversity standards. The National Journal's headline, why Obama's white guy problem seems worse than it is. And Ruth Marcus writes in the Washington Post, Obama needs some binders of women. And it didn't help when we learned Secretary of Labor Hilda Solis announced her resignation to her staff yesterday. She is the first Latina woman to serve in the cabinet. Let me bring in Nia Malika Henderson, political reporter for the Washington Post and Roll Call's politics staff writer Shira Toplitz. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let me read to you part of Ruth Marcus's column. Not an outrage, but a shame. The face of power that President Obama has chosen to present to the country and the world with his second term cabinet picks is striking, except for the African American president at the top of the pyramid, for its retro look, white and male. It's Mad Men Goes to Washington, except Peggy's leaving. Nia Malika, are the critics right? You know, I think it's striking because so much of the debates uh, that went on in the 2012 uh, campaign was about the role of women. Uh, it was about uh, Mitt Romney and his uh, so-called lack of understanding of the role of women and lack of sort of acknowledgement of that. So to have a White House where they roll out uh, white men after white, white man after white man in terms of these top cabinet posts, I think it has struck people as, uh, as a sort of dissonant in terms of what the, the Obama campaign claimed to be about and what they're presenting. Now, I think uh, it's odd to me that they have been so heavy handed in dealing with this, that someone in the White House didn't notice that they, they might have had an optics problem uh, in rolling these folks out uh, back to back to back. Uh, and so what, what you had them do, of course, is say, well, they've got all of these other uh, people who are staying in the cabinet. Well, well, let, me, let me interrupt you there, because I want to play exactly. The question obviously was asked yesterday, and here was the White House response. Janet DiPolitano is the Secretary of Sheriff Homeland Security. Uh, a cabinet level position, the UN ambassador, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations is Susan Rice. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I could, I could go through the list. This president has appointed, had made, has made two appointments to the Supreme Court, both of them women. Uh, and I think that his commitment to. Do you think it's an unfair charge? Well, I, I think that the record speaks for itself. Uh, sure, you can tell that they're aware of what's being said. They released a photo yesterday. Take a look at this one with some female advisors in the picture because uh, everyone was talking about this other picture. Ten advisors in a room with the president during the fiscal cliff negotiations, and you don't have to stare at it to know that they're all men. How much of an optics problem is it? How much of it is a very real, real problem? I do think the majority of the problem is optical, and it's also a communications issue. Even if you look at the timing of the rollouts of some of his uh, previous nominees, look at the Chuck Hagel nominee and how hard it's been for the White House to defend their own nominees. They've been kind of hanging them out to dry, essentially, and for members of Congress to have their opportunity to throw shots at them. It's been rather interesting and rare that the transition here has been so bumpy, especially for a president going into its second term. But look, there's still a lot of turnover left in this cabinet. Even though uh, the president announced three cabinet members are going to be staying on for a while, who knows if that means it's going to be six months, a year, two years. There will be opportunity for turnover there as well. We'll see if he's going to nominate more women. I do believe he will be under immense pressure to appoint another woman to Secretary of Labor to succeed Hilda Solis. And that shouldn't be hard. There's actually only, I just looked it up, there's only been one male to serve in that post since the Reagan administration. Hold on, because I also want to bring in longtime Congressman Charlie Rang.